Welcome back to our live coverage of the United Nations Climate Talks here in South Africa. I'm delighted to say that we've been joined by Jerry Lenguasa of the World Meteorological Organization. Uh, Jerry, your organization tracks the, the state of the climate, and I know you bring out an annual report each year looking at the, the state of the climate. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where are we at? <laughs> right. Um, where we are, thanks uh, first of all for having me join you and the audience. Where we are, um, the annual statement, uh, of course, we are not through the year yet, uh, so it's a provisional statement uh, which takes account of the first 10 months of 2011. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so far, on, for temperatures, there's a clear indication that um, uh, it is about 0.45 degrees above normal, which means and the norm, norm is uh, 14 uh, degrees C of uh, global average temperatures uh, if you start counting in nine, uh, 1970s. So we are uh, above that, however, this year is cooler than 2010, um, even though it is cooler because of the effect of uh, La Nina. Now, La Nina is the opposite of El Nino, which probably is much more well known as a climate uh, uh, indicator, uh, where the ocean areas um, along the coast of South America, on the western side of South America, tend to change between warm and cool. Um, the El Nino tends to be warmer ocean temperatures that has impacts globally on different weather patterns through the world. Uh, cooler patterns, uh, the La Nina, tends to have a cooling effect uh, over the ocean. So um, what we have noticed though is that even though we've had the cooling impact of the La Nina, um, it is still, temperatures are still higher uh, than they have been in any other El Nina year, La Nina year in the past. So this year, 2011, provisionally, still counts as most likely the 10th highest ranking uh, year uh, in terms of temperatures in the world. And how long have, how long have these temperatures been tracked? And, and you know, if, where, are the, where are the hot years coming? If we were to spread them out across a, a graph, where would you see the warmer years? The warmest years actually have occurred in the last decade between uh, uh, 2000 and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, 1997 and present. Those, the, tenth, the 13 warmest years have occurred in the last 15 years, uh, starting in uh, just after 2000. So, and the record-breaking year was 2010. Um, we have done a survey of 100 members out of 100 countries, out of 189 countries. None of those countries have recorded temperatures lower than their normal temperatures over the last decade. All of them, without fail, have recorded temperatures that have broken national records. That would include Helsinki, for example, uh, in uh, Finland, which recorded 47 degrees in the north. Now, that's the extent to which temperatures are changing uh, through the world. So recording what we call modern recorded uh, uh, norms for, for temperature recordings started uh, well in the 1700s, 1800s. Uh, and so we have a physical recording of how the temperature has been changing over time. Prior to that, of course, we have other technology uh, that was used like ice core, drilling and so forth to study what the climate was previously. Yeah. And it, so it sounds like the trends are relatively clear. You said is it the, the, the 10 of the, the, the 13 warmest have been in, in recent years or something. It's, mm. it's, it's alarming, um, alarming statistics and alarming data. Yeah. How confident are you in this, in this data? How confident are you in the results? Well, when you, uh, and I hope our audience is familiar with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, it was set up by the World Meteorological Organization and the United Nations Environment Program to assess the state of knowledge in terms of published uh, knowledge, so peer-reviewed articles, books that have been published on the subject. Um, and out of that state of assessment of knowledge came, in particular, the understanding that we need models 
to understand how the earth would behave in future, in particular in relation to greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, not just emissions, but greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere. And I will come to why these temperatures are changing, because uh, that's an important uh, element. Now, in the past, we did these models, and we ran global climate simulation models, if you may, <clears throat> may call them. Those models in the early parts, um, 20, 30 years ago, uh, were largely looking at the atmosphere only. Mm -hmm. Over time, they have matured as computing power has improved and data has improved. Um, now we do what we call an ocean atmosphere coupling. So you take account of the oceans, they, they have their own energy circulation systems. You have the uh, uh, atmosphere, which has its own uh, circulations of distribution of energy. Um, and then <clears throat> those models are now also taking into account the aerosols of what we put out into the atmosphere from burning coal stoves and so forth. And what is key with those models is that they simulated what the climate could be with certain concentrations of greenhouse gases. And then made estimates or projections about what the weather patterns could be under a warm climate of X degree uh, you would see certain patterns. Now, what was projected was that with uh, increasing carbon dioxide concentrations or greenhouse gas concentrations, the Earth's temperatures increase. With that increase, we would pro they project uh, that we would have certain kinds of weather patterns uh, which are not the norm. Now, the statement that we release on an annual basis is now backward looking in terms of what have we actually experienced mm -hmm. in different parts of the world and then using that and compiling that and then publishing the statement. So what we publish in the statement is what is observed. Uh -huh. And so when we compare what is observed with what the models predicted mm -hmm. a few years ago in advance, okay. uh, there's now <laughs> Mohammed, an thank you for joining consistency. Us in what the models were predicting would be a type of weather patterns mm -hmm. and therefore the extremes that we talk about mm -hmm. Helsinki 47 degrees many other parts of the world experiencing droughts mm -hmm. um, right. uh, other parts of the world experiencing uh, <laughs> record rainfall um, all point to extreme events uh, that are happening now mm -hmm. And so um, when, when, when we publish next year, we will publish a summary of all extreme events that have happened in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, a worrying picture that emerges is the re what we call the return period mm -hmm. of some of these events. So where you used to have a drought that would be extended, for example, in the south of the USA at the moment, Texas, as one of the worst uh, 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 droughts on record. You would have expected the 1500s uh, to have uh, the last, I think, extreme drought was a 1500 and something. In there. Now you're seeing a return period of those extreme events becoming smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. And that's where the worry is, is that what is today's extreme events are going to become tomorrow's normal. <laughs> Okay, and uh, I'll just remind our viewers that this is going out live so that they can put their questions uh, to us if they like, and uh, we'll do our best to pick those uh, up if possible. Um, uh, you take, yeah, have to take the opportunity to, to have a drink. Um, the, the question that, I, that kind of I find myself asking when I hear this is, what do you say to those people who, um, who don't, don't believe uh, in climate change? Because whenever I have a conversation like this with, uh, with someone, um, they can, they're always able to cite some paper from the 1970s that proves us wrong. Or, you know, I saw Lord Monckton walk past, who's quite a notorious climate skeptic, uh, uh, when we were doing the show yesterday. And if, if him, you try and talk to him, he'll say, oh, you know, but the, the, the weather stations are close to the airports. Yes, and and right. uh, mm -hmm. some, so there'll be something. What would you say to people who, uh, who, yeah. who are influenced by yeah. this kind of conversation? Well, I, I always say that we, we don't experience climate. We experience weather, 
which in the long run aggregates into a climate condition, right? So the climate is the long-term aggregation of weather events over time. Mm -hmm. So the daily, our daily experience of how the climate is changing is in how the weather patterns are changing because that's, that's our daily experience. You wake up every morning, uh, you make a decision what to wear based on the information that is provided. Mm -hmm. And it is that observed pattern of the weather that is of concern, mm -hmm. right? And points to, uh, so I would normally say to anybody who is in doubt, mm -hmm. uh, is think carefully about what is your recent experience mm -hmm. of weather patterns uh, in your very recent past. And I think you would find very few people who will tell you they haven't experienced something out of the normal. Mm -hmm. Whether they're in Tornado Valley, where they've had a record uh, of uh, those, or whether you're in New York, mm -hmm. where you had a hurricane hit New York, mm -hmm. or you are uh, in uh, Southern Africa, where you have record floods in parts of Namibia, where 10 millimeters of rain was your annual average, and you have 10 millimeters of rain in one day. Mm -hmm. So every, there's no average person, if I may use the term average, who has not experienced in the recent past um, some abnormal weather condition that they would say we've never experienced it before. Uh, Please, so we have received a question from Twitter. Mm -hmm. it says, does the intensity of 2011, uh, or do, the do, do the intensity of the 2011 Thai floods reflect a global warming trend? Is this, are these the kinds of things we can expect to see more of in the future? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say directly the Thai floods per se, because the, we have to understand uh, there's a number of combination of things. But um, similarly in the US, where you had flooding. Um, what we will see are the precipitating, mm -hmm. uh, excuse the pun, the precipitating issues mm -hmm. that result in flooding. Now, some of the Thai floods were a combination of factors. One, you had a hurricane, mm -hmm. and the hurricane, of course, results in a lot of downpour, uh, and then you had heavy rains thereafter. So the soil is already saturated. Mm -hmm. uh, in the US, the, the floods, mm -hmm. where again you had a very warm, uh, uh, spring, mm -hmm. so heavy snow melt, and so already uh, the soil was saturated. So by the time you start to get rain, it's clear it has nowhere else to go, right, but to flow uh, towards the ocean and follow its natural course. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you have flooding. So the question was early warning uh, was given in the US, uh, also in Thailand. So whilst we cannot, uh, it's the heavy precipitation and some of those records have been broken uh, in Thailand and it's the combination of these issues that often results in devastation. So uh, for Russia was the same, uh, a record high temperatures uh, resulting in uh, uh, conditions that are conducive for runaway fires mm -hmm. and so you, you go down the scale. There, are, there is work though that seeks to attribute single events to climate change. But what we say is that it's very clear that the kind of temperature conditions we have currently, more warmer nights, longer, longer warmer days, or periods of warming, fewer cooling days, in parts of the world where you would not expect that to be happening as a norm, mm -hmm. uh, means that there is a change to our climate, and we have to adapt to those changes. Um, so the question, would be, yes, we will continue to see extreme events continue, and our concern is that those become what is extreme today, becomes the norm tomorrow, and then we have to adapt to a different uh, earth system that we exist in. Jerry, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a fascinating uh, discussion, um, and we'll look forward to hearing from you next year uh, with your, your next State of the Climate uh, uh, update. Yeah, it's uh, much earlier because we will publish the uh, State of the Climate over the 10 years from 2000 to 2010. Uh, that comes out in March uh, 2012. So Something for our viewers to keep their change. eyes peeled for. Absolutely. Okay.